Subhanallah. Omar ibn Khattab, what when he used to when he used to do checks on his governors, he never once asked him, "What's your five year plan for Egypt? What's your five year plan for spreading the Dawah in Bahrain?" He asked, "Go and check if he prays in the mosque. Go and check what his life is like. What are his daily habits of this governor?" One time he said he sent a spy, and there is a halal spying, and that is called, um, um, subhanAllah, there's a word for it. What's the word for it? I can't remember what the word for that, but no, no, in Arabic, I'm trying to think. The halal spying is to look at what you do in public or to get yourself invited to his house. So Sayyidina Omar used to send halal spies, and that is, go and look at how uh, he lives Get yourself invited to his house. So he went to one and he said, Omar, I couldn't get invited to, his, to the house. He said, why? He said, this man, Omar, oh, Allah, he's poor. Your governor is poor. Your governor has no money to even invite me for a lamb or a sheep. He went to one and, and Omar said, and okay, what else is his, what about his public practice? He said, Omar, he has a, he, he has a very strange public practice. For two days, he's amazing. He shows up for every salah, right? And he has khushua and taqwa, and he sees people from day to night. He takes care of business. Third, every third day, he disappears, takes a day off. He takes a day off. So he invited him. The governor comes. He said, um, your report is excellent. I don't understand why you take th every third day off. Like They don't see you in the mosque. You don't hold court. You don't meet with the people or with your government. What's going on? He said, I don't want to say. He said, oh, Milik, you're boss. You have to say. You can't tell Omar, I don't want to say. He said, oh, maybe we need to have one garment. I have to wash it. And when I wash it, I have to sit there, wait until it dries. So Omar Abu Khattab said, this, this man, this man deserves everything he should get of reward. And he said, take this money, take this money, take this money, go buy yourself garments, serve. You are the one that I want. Why? Because the individual said, he didn't say, what's your master plan? He looked at you as the cell. Whatever, if you're good, no matter what happens, the result's going to be good. But if you're rotten, your brain and your plan is not going to change you. It's not going to benefit you. It's not going to benefit anybody. So that man went back. And then Omar sent the spy again. He said, you shouldn't have the problem. You'll be taken off every third day anymore. He came back. Omar, nothing changed. He said, what is with this man? He said, no, Omar, he gave it all away. in sadaqah. <laughs> then he went to another man. He sent another man. He said, go get invited to his house. Check out what he does. He said, Omar, he said to Omar, uh, said, no, Omar, he came back after a couple months. He said, Omar, I got invited. I had fish the first time. I had chicken the second time. I had lamb the next time. I had camel the next time. And every single visit, every month I got visited to this man's house, a new curtain, new sofas. Omar said, this man is corrupt. Get him out, right? They said, Omar, uh, it's not haram to have all this. Say, North man was very rich. Abdurrahman bin Awf is he's a very rich. They're citizens. As a citizen, do what you want. When you work for the government, you cannot be using your position, right, to gain your wealth. Open a business if you want to get rich, but don't try to be a governor. Abu Huraira went, very simple. Abu Huraira, beloved to the ummah, sahaba loved him, has one wife, one daughter. Abu Huraira, you have been gathering hadith and teaching. Now it's time for you to serve. We need you. Amir al-Mu'mineen Labbaik. Where am I going? Bahrain. Goes to Bahrain. Comes back for the annual. Every one or two years, you make Hajj and Omar meets with you. All the governors. Comes back. Beautiful garment. Right? Dressed nicely. Yeah, Abu Huraira. Where'd you get this? Abu Huraira says, Omar, I know you. It's all halal trade and I have witnesses. I took the money I had. 
I went to the marketplace. I traded it with my own self, my own two eyes. I know it's 100% halal. He said, you traded in the marketplace. He said, yes. I didn't take any money from the state. He said, oh, okay. So you go to Bahrain and everyone says, oh, this is the governor. Let's give him a good deal. Let's trade with the governor. Give him a good deal. In the future, we may need him. All this wealth is invalid. Give it all back. What you had when you went, that's all you're allowed to keep. Okay. Next had she comes, he said, I'm resigning my post. He said, why? We need you there, right? We need righteous people like yourself there. He said, I need to make a buck, right? I need to make some money. I can't make any money in this job. He resigns. SubhanAllah. So the, the cell, the individual human... And his daily routine is what matters. And uh, in the end of time that we're in, your master plans means diddly squat. Unless, unless you also have excellent day-to-day -day habits of taqwa, of lowering the gaze. It's those day-to-day -day habits of making salah, doing all these things. That's the foundation. If you have a master plan, then that's on top of that, that's good. Right, but without it, it's the useless.